Welcome to the third in our CC3D series. In this video we're going to connect a Bluetooth adapter to our CC3D using this cable that came in the CC3D kit. Now the reason that you'd want to do this is one, it's a really cool mod, it's a very cheap and cheerful mod, these modules are $10 or less and um, it allows you to connect wirelessly from your PC or from an Android device to do things like change PID settings and flight modes at the field. Uh, the type of BT module is something we're going to talk about in the video, then we'll look at the software that we need, then we'll look at connecting the board to the computer. To do that we're going to need one of these things, this is an FTDI adapter, uh, we use these a lot on the channel, if you search for FTDI basic on places like Banggood and eBay you'll find them, and we need that so that we can plug this board into a USB connector on the PC. Then, once we've done that, we'll set the board up. We need to set the board rate, we, know we need to set things like uh, the name, which is quite fun, and also things like the default pin number so that we can bind it to whatever we're going to talk. Then we will go and connect the CC3D to the ground station and configure that, so that's ready as well. Then we'll connect it together using the cable that came in the kit, and then finally we'll do a quick demo with an Android device just to show you how it works in practice. But the first thing we need to talk about is the actual Bluetooth module itself. Now the one I'm using here is a HC05 or a HC06 module. These are great because they need to be 5 volt modules because that's what comes out of the CC3D and it's handy if they have these kind of pins at the end because they're perfect to fit the cable that we get in the kit. So if you search for those you'll find them on the usual places and you'll be ready to go. Now we know about that, next thing we need to think about is software. If you want to know more about the Bluetooth setup, you can actually find all of this information that we're going to go through at the wiki.openpilot.org slash display slash wiki slash Bluetooth plus setup plus for plus telemetry. Um, I'll actually put a link in the description so you can find it, but um, once you've watched this video, hopefully you won't need to read that because it'll explain it all for you. So now we've done that, the first thing we need to talk about then is how we're going to connect the board to the PC and how we are going to then talk to the board to do those settings. So to connect the FTDI adapter to the Bluetooth is relatively straightforward. So what I'll do is let me just put a quick diagram up and I'll talk you through it. So on the FTDI adapter there is a receive, transmit, plus 5 volts and ground. And similarly on the HC05, HC06 Bluetooth adapter, there is receive, transmit, ground and plus 5 volts. Uh, if you're not sure, on the back of your Bluetooth module, it's probably actually written uh, which is which pin. So it becomes relatively straightforward to plug all of the cables into the back of the board and then just figure out which is which and then plug the right pin into the right pin out onto the FTDI because again the FTDI is very nicely marked up. So once we've got those two things plugged together we can then plug that into the PC and select the software. So now we know how to wire the FTDI adapter up the next thing we need to do is get the software on a PC that will allow us to talk to the Bluetooth module via the FTDI to set the things like the board rate, the name, and the default pins. Now there are two options that we have here to do this. There is one that is discussed in the actual wiki pages for the Bluetooth setup that we had a quick look at before. Um, and if we scroll down here, it actually talks about a uh, software that we can download to try it. Now the software that they talk about here is btconqt4.zip. I'm not using that myself. Uh, you can right click that and do the save as so that you can pop that onto your desktop. Um, I use the Arduino software myself and we'll use this version in the video. If you just search and Google for Arduino downloads you'll find this page but it's www.arduino.cc slash en slash main slash software. If you download the latest version, nice thing about this is it's got Linux, Mac and Windows versions, then uh, we are good to go. So I'm actually going to run this Arduino version on the desktop so that we can sort this out. 
Okay, next thing we need to do then is finally plug the USB cable into the PC and the FTDI adapter and then we're ready to do the programming. And in here we are going to make sure that we have the right port selected for the FTDI adapter that's connected. So, what we're going to do is click on Tools, select Port, make sure that the port that the FTDI is being seen as is selected which is all good. Doesn't matter what the uh, board and processor type is set to in here because actually we are just going to run something called the serial monitor. So if I start serial monitor, that will start on COM7 and we are now talking directly terminal-like to the board. Now I happen to know this one's running at 115200 but it could be set at any of these from 9600 up. I've had a few start at 9600 um, and uh, a couple that have been delivered at 57600 but I happen to know it's 115200. If you're not sure start at 9600 and then work your way up and the way we check everything's working is we type capital letter A T and hit enter. If we get OK back then we know two things. One, we have it wired up properly to the FTDI adapter and secondly we have the right board selected. If we use another board speed like 9600 and type AT and hit enter we don't get anything back. So I would just, if you're not sure, just keep selecting the board speeds, keep typing AT until eventually you get to the one that works for you. And you'll know the one that's working because you'll get a capital O, capital K back saying OK. Now here is where we're going to set the board up with three commands. The first one we're going to do is we're actually going to set up the board rate. Now we're lucky here that it's 115200 uh, and we're actually going to set it to 57600 which is the one below this one. Um, most of mine is set to 115200 um, but just for purposes because we're already set there we'll set this one to 57600 so we're going to type AT put B A U D 7 it'll come back and say OK 57600 now if I type AT and hit enter I don't get anything back and that's because the board rate has changed to 57600 so if I match that in the serial monitor and type AT again there we are, we know we're talking, so that looks good. The next thing we can do is we can change the name of the board and how it's discovered on Bluetooth devices. So we type AT plus name, again it's all got to be uppercase, if it isn't it won't work, and I'm going to call my model 250 quad. I'm going to hit enter, and there the set name is done, and the last thing we'll do is AT plus pin, and we'll have the pin default 1234 hit enter or send and OK set pin is done as well so we have now got everything set up to plug this into the CC3D so let's unplug this from the FTDI adapter and take a quick look at the wiring diagram before we start plugging the wires into the flight controller so the wiring on the two ports, the main and the flexi port that are at the bottom of the CC3D are the same. They go receive, transmit, plus 5 volts and ground. And on the HC05, HC06 Bluetooth module we've already seen that it goes receive, transmit, ground and 5 volts. So it's a relatively straightforward thing to do. We can use the cable that comes in the kit to wire it up. So we're going to connect the ground and plus 5 volts together and then we're going to connect the receive pin on the CC3D to the transmit pin on the HC05 and vice versa. You always need to make sure that the receive and transmit is swapped and that way the one that's listening is listening to the one that's talking. Always double check, this is one of the first things I would uh, just swap around. You can't hurt it by having receive and transmit the wrong way around but sometimes occasionally the printing on the back of some of these cheaper Bluetooth modules is incorrect. So if it's not working this is the first thing I'd do, just swap those two wires over. Okay, now we know that here is my actual Bluetooth module wired up. This is the cable that came in the kit. So as you can see at the bottom 
the uh, red wire is plugged into the plus 5 volts, the black wire goes into ground and in this particular instance my yellow and green wires go into receive and transmit and it's ready to plug in. So we'll plug this into the CC3D. And there we go, the Bluetooth is now connected. So the last thing then is we'll power everything up and we'll connect to it with an Android device and just check that everything is all working. So here we are with our 330 class quad, the Bluetooth is all powered up. We can tell it's powered because we're getting the little red flashing light. The red flashing light on this particular board means that it's waiting for a connection. Now here on my little Samsung Android tablet, I'm in App Store and I've just searched for Open Pilot and I've got all these different versions of Open Pilot control software. The one we're actually just going to use is the one called Open Pilot GCS uh, with no Tau Labs Nang. Um, adverts. So I'm just going to run that one. I've already got it installed so I'll open it. Obviously we need to connect to the board here. So we're going to go on settings. We're going to make sure that the connection type is selected as Bluetooth which it is and then we're going to click on Bluetooth device and here is all the Bluetooth devices that it can see. The middle one is called 250 quad and that should be the one that we're after. So if I now go back and say connect we should see the light go solid on the Bluetooth module. Here we go, fantastic. So here we could actually change things like the tuning and other pieces as well. So now we're actually connected and talking wirelessly via the Android device to the CC3D. The challenge at the moment with this is that um, the Android technology and applications aren't yet fantastic in my opinion. There's really nice ones for the multi-Wii and there's also nice ones for things like the APM but right now they're a little bit basic on the Android. This is just to show you it'll connect but it does now mean that you can use this for basic interaction with the board of the field using Bluetooth but also you can use this to connect wirelessly from your PC with a Bluetooth adapter on it so that you don't have to have a USB cable or you can monitor what's going on the board uh, up to you know 20 30 feet out in an open field keeping the connection and seeing what's happening so hopefully that's interesting for those of you that wanted to know how all of this worked thanks for watching please like subscribe and happy flying